Scott Groves here with another mortgage mystery. What is seller credit in a real estate transaction? This is a really interesting question we had asked of us on Facebook, and it's, it's simple and complicated all at the same time. A seller credit is simply an amount of money that the seller is giving the buyer on a real estate transaction. Really that simple. But how does this come about and how does it get applied? So when you buy a house, it's kind of weird how we do real estate in America because maybe you get to walk in the house at an open house, kind of look around three or four times for 10, 20, 30 minutes, and then you have to make an offer on the house and say, okay, I'm offering to buy this house for 400,000 or a million or 2 million, and I really don't know a whole lot about it. So you, the buyer, your realtor who represented you in the transaction and presumably a licensed inspector will go to the house and inspect everything the plumbing, the electrical, under the building, above the building, the side of the building, the whole nine yards. And if you find problems during the inspection, you can go back to the seller and ask for credits. Meaning, let's say for example, you buy a house and there's a serious problem with the electrical panel. Maybe it's outdated, there's a serious you know, health and safety violation because you're buying an older house. Well, you, the buyer, have the option to go back to the seller and say, hey, before we close on the house, I need either that electrical panel fixed, or I need a $2,000 credit in order to have my contractor come in and fix the electrical panel. So what'll happen is the seller's not just just gonna write the buyer a check. They're not even going to credit them real cash. What they're gonna do is the seller is going to issue a credit if they agree for this hypothetical $2,000 that will go to the escrow or the title company, and then the escrow or title company will know, all right, when we balance the books, 2,000 less dollars or 2,000 fewer dollars are gonna go to the seller, and 2,000 more dollars are gonna go to the buyer or more accurately decrease the amount of money that the buyer has to come in to close the deal. So in this hypothetical, the buyer buys the property, they go inspect the property, they find this $2,000 hypothetical problem with the electrical system. The seller agrees. They say, you know, that's something we've been meaning to fix for a while. We'll go ahead and credit you the $2,000. That will come out of our proceeds when we sell the house. And now you, the buyer, let's say for example, you were bringing in $45,000 to close on this real estate transaction. Now you're only gonna have to bring in $43,000 to close on this real estate transaction because the seller has credited you $2,000. Now it's very important that all parties are informed about this. The underwriter needs to know about it. The lender needs to know about it. The agents obviously both need to know about it. The title or escrow company that's handling the exchange needs to know about it. So the sooner that you as the buyer, or if you're a buyer's agent, if you're watching this, the sooner that we can get the request for repairs and those potential credits from the seller negotiated, that information back to the title, the escrow, the lender, all of the people involved, the sooner the better because there's some stuff the lender has to do to make sure that all those credits can be applied correctly. Now, there used to be this thing saying, can credits go towards current, reoccurring and non-recurring closing costs? I don't need to explain that because that doesn't exist anymore. But the bottom line is, whatever the buyer is paying in closing costs, the seller can offer up to that maximum amount of costs that the buyer is paying to obtain that home in order to have some offsetting credits. So let's say for example, by the time the buyer pays for their appraisal, their closing costs, their homeowner's insurance, their upfront costs, their title, their escrow, let's say it costs them $7,000 in fees for the buyer to close on the house. Well, the seller can offer credits totaling up to $7,000 to wipe out all of those costs associated with the real estate transaction. So going all the way back to my hypothetical, let's say instead of a $2,000 issue with the house, they found a $10,000 issue with the house. Well, this is, gets a little tricky and this is why you need to have a lender and a realtor that know what they're doing. So we now have a bigger problem. The seller is willing to give the buyer $10,000, but the buyer only has $7,000 in closing costs. There's nothing else to pay in the transaction. And remember, the seller is not just gonna walk in and hand a check to the buyer. That's not how real estate transactions work. So what you need to do in this situation, again, you have to be paired with a lender that knows what they're doing. You have to have $7,000 
go to paying off those hypothetical closing costs. And then the remaining $3,000 needs to be applied elsewhere or needs to be applied as a price reduction to the house. So it gets a little complicated if the credit from the seller, because of issues known about the house, starts to exceed the total closing costs that the buyer is paying, you've got to get a little creative. So this is kind of a, 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 a strange situation. It's unique with every single deal. And what I would say is that if you're a buyer who's thinking about buying a house that might have a fair amount of issues, or you're in a situation where you need some credits from the seller in order to cover your closing costs so that you can buy the house, you really need to be working with a top-notch lender. We would love for that to be us, the Scott Groves team. So use our email below, our phone number below, our link that will put you directly on our calendar. We'd love to have a conversation with you about how you can structure these closing costs and these closing cost credits and how you can maybe even save some money getting into the house. We can help you get pre-approved. We can help you buy in all 50 states in the nation. I personally am licensed in about 10 states. I've got referral sources everywhere else throughout the country. So if you wanna talk a little bit more about this topic, you want to apply for a purchase and you want to be in a place to make an offer so you can get some of those credits from the seller, we'd love to help. If you found this informational at all, or you have some questions or you have some comments, click the like button, subscribe to the channel and leave comments below. We read and respond to every comment. So if you want some more clarification on this topic, we'd be happy to help. Scott Groves, thanks again for watching.